to this third video in my beginner's guide to Budrigar genetics. In this video we're going to look at the incomplete dominance such as that found in the dark factor or the spangle um, bird. But before we do that what I'd like to do is to quickly recap on what we've learned in videos 1 and 2. In order to do that using the Punnett square I'd like you to predict the outcome of the crossing of two green split blue birds. It doesn't matter which sex they are, but two green split blue birds. I'm going to make my way over to the computer while you're doing that, and once you've done it, let's compare the results. Hello again, here we are back at the computer um, with our Punnett square for the um, green split blue um, cross split green split blue. If you're unsure of how to use the Punnett square then please do now click on the link uh, just to the right of the Punnett square um, and watch the previous video. Hopefully by now those of you that um, have watched the previous two videos will understand how to complete this. Um, so what I'd like you to do is to complete it um, uh, pause the video, complete the um, Punnett square, and then once you're happy that you've completed it and identified the um, percentage outcomes for this crossing, um, unpause the video and we'll go through it. So, pause the video now. Hello and welcome back. Then hopefully by now you will have completed the uh, Punnett square for this crossing of the green split blue cock and the green split blue hen. Um, we'll just run through it together then to make sure we check the outcome. So in this square here we've got two Alalises that are both the uh, dominant green. So we'll have a capital or uppercase B and a 1 and another uppercase B and a 1 representing the two squares there and there. And that would give us a, um, a green bird that would be um, phenotype would be green and the genotype would be green. In this square here we've got the lowercase b and a 1 and coming across from this square here we have the um, uppercase b and a 1 so the dominant um, green gene. So this, this square here represents a bird that would have the dominant uh, green allelise and the recessive um, blue allelise so it would give us a phenotype green bird with a genotype of green split blue. Down here we've got the um, uppercase B1, the um, green uh, dominant green allelise, and a lowercase B1 representing the um, recessive blue allelise. So once again we've got the same um, bird here, so it would be a green split blue bird, or phenotype green split blue of a geno, sorry, genotype green split blue, phenotype would be green. In this square here though we've got a um, lowercase b1 and a lowercase b1 which would give us two of the um, recessive blue genes and therefore that would produce a blue bird. So in terms of the predicted outcome it would be 75% uh, of the birds would be phenotype um, uh, green and 25% of the birds would be um, phenotype blue. However, 50% of the birds would be um, genotype uh, green split blue. So they would be a green split blue birds we would expect. So I hope you um, all got the answer to uh, that uh, crossing and the predicted outcomes of that, that crossing. So now this gives us a chance to move on and look at the incomplete dominance pairings. Hello and welcome back. I hope you found that um, short exercise in use of the Punnett square and the um, recessive and dominant interaction and how to predict outcomes of the um, recessive and dominant genes um, useful and a refresher. Don't forget if you are unsure of how to use either the Punnett square or how the um, dominant and recessive genes interact you can of course um, review videos um, number one and two in this series. So let's now consider the um, incomplete dominance. Well when we looked at the um, dominant and recessive type genes there were, whilst there were three um, genetic types, so it was either 
the um, bird could either have two of the uh, dominant Annaleases or it could be split with the um, recessive Annalise and a dominant Annalise or alternatively it would have two of the um, recessive Annaleases so there are three genotypes that were only in fact two phenotypes so it either looked like the um, dominant um, uh, Annalise or it looked like the recessive Annalise. In incomplete dominance there is a stage in between so for all three of those um, genotypes so both dominant the dominant and recessive and the two recessive, for each of those phenotypes there is an equivalent, um, sorry, for each of those genotypes there is an equivalent phenotype bird. So in the um, spangle, for example, we all know that the spangle bird will, will either be, will have, if it contains none of the, um, of the spangle allelis uh, mutated gene, uh, then it will look like, just look like the normal bird. If it contains one of the alleleses, so one of the dominant spangle alleles, it will be what we often refer to as a single factor spangle, and it will look like the bird just over here. Or if it contains both of the um, spangle alleleses, the dominant spangle alleleses, there's a further stage, and it will look like the bird that we can see here. And the same is true in terms of the uh, dark factor, so we know there are you know, three factors of dark bird. Let's go over to the um, Punnett square again and have a quick look at what this means in terms of our prediction. At this stage, we, we won't add any colour analyse or um, mutations to the bird. We'll just look at the single factor, uh, the single um, factor in terms of the um, incomplete dominance gene and how those interact and what the expected outcomes are. So let's quickly go over the computer and I hope you join me there. Well, here we are back at the computer with a new Punnett square set up for the um, incomplete dominance for a, a single factor spangle crossed with a single factor spangle. In terms of the genetic symbols, um, I'm using the um, uh, genetic symbol SP to represent the uh, spangle mutation. So in a, a normal um, bird, so one that is um, prior to the spangle um, mutation, we would it, the normal bird would contain the annelise marked by the um, two, the lowercase s and p, and the mutated gene is marked with the uppercase s and p. That's because um, the spangle gene, the mutated gene, unlike that of the um, blue mu mutation, the uh, spangle mutation is um, considered to be dominant, although it's incomplete dominance in this case, um, but it is the dominant part of the gene. So let's have a look. We cross two um, single factor spangles um, together. Let's have a look at what our expected outcome will be. And it's exactly the same principle as we used before. So in this square, we would have the small sp and the small sp. In this square here, it will be a small sp and the large sp. And um, in this square here, it would be the small sp and a large sp. And then in this um, space here, it would be large sp and the large sp. So if we have a look at what we've got now then, so uh, this um, bird here with the two um, non-mutated genes would be the standard bird. So there would be no sign of the um, spangle mutation at all in that particular um, bird there. In these two birds here, we would end up with a, a mutated bird that had the um, phenotype that was exactly the same as the two parents' birds. So the phenotype would be a single factor spangle bird, so the um, single factor spangle in that case. And in this uh, um, bird here, so this outcome here, we would have a, a phenotype of a double factor spangle. So it would look completely different from the two parents. It would be the um, double factor spango, spangle. So in terms of the expected outcome of this particular crossing, we would expect the outcome to be 50% um, single factor spangles, 25% uh, uh, normal, and 25% 
double factor spangles. So we can see how there is a difference here in terms of the way um, the phenotype um, would show up. There would be three different phenotypes as there are three different um, genotypes and the, that allows for a slightly different outcome with it being what would have previously we would have considered split now showing up. So 25% 25, 25 are normal, 50% single factor spangles and 25% uh, double factor spangles. Let's consider the um, dark gene now. So here we are with the um, incomplete dominance of the dark factor and in this case we'll look at a um, double factor um, dark bird up here. Let's assume that it's a, a double factor green in which case it would be an olive green bird and on here we have a um, uh, a standard um, light green bird here. So as we said the um, dark allelis is um, dominant so it's written with a, an uppercase or a capital D and the um, non-mutated um, uh, dark gene is written is um, recessive and therefore written with a, a lowercase d. So if we mutate if we um, breed these two birds together so the light green hen with a um, olive green a cock as you might expect I'll let you fill these out I'll um, just pause for a second while you do complete the um, the Punnett square. If you want to pause, I pause the video now. Um, once you've completed it, come back. So, hopefully, you will have completed the square. It's a fairly simple um, Punnett square to complete. So, we in this square here, we would have a um, a D and a split D, and in here we would have a D split D, down here we would have a D split D, and down here we would have a D split D. So breeding the um, the olive green um, cock with the light green hen would actually produce a um, full 100% dark green bird. So in this um, crossing we would end up with a, a phenotype offspring that was completely different phenotype um, from the both of the two parent birds. Two parent birds were an olive green and a light green and a hundred percent of the offspring would all be um, dark green. So here we can see the, the way the incomplete dominance work. It can end up with a phenotype different from the, um, the parents birds. So that's our enough on the um, incomplete dominance. I, um, do play around with it, um, set up to your own uh, Punnett squares and play around with the genotypes uh, of the various um, incomplete dominant um, varieties uh, and, that, and I'll see you back um, in a few seconds. Hi and welcome back then. I hope you enjoyed um, working through those examples of the um, incomplete dominance. So let's just recap then. There are three stages in terms of the um, incomplete dominance um, allelis and the type of bird that you can get. So where the bird is homozygous with the two um, dominant allelis, then its phenotype is, is in fact the um, double factor version of the bird where the um, bird has, is heterozygous in terms of the incomplete dominant allelis, then there's an intermediate stage, and we refer to this as being a single factor, and where the bird is homozygous in terms of the recessive type of the allelis, then the bird is phenotype of the um, non-mutated gene. So there we have it. We've also had an introduction to the term single and um, double factor. In fact, this can be used for any type of bird that contains a mutated or two different types of annelies for the same um, gene. So, in effect, we could say that a green split blue bird is in fact a single factor blue, and a blue bird is a double factor blue. So, we could use those. There's also another term I'd like to introduce you to that um, 
um, some people may still use, and you often hear it used when referring in particular to crested type buttery regards, and that's the term bread. Um, I was looking through a very old book the other day and they referred to as a, um, a split, so a green split blue bird as being blue bread, so a blue bread bird. That really means that just the bird is split for that particular type of gene. So when you hear someone talking about it being bred, um, so a crested bred bird, it just means that it is split for crest. And you could again use that for anything else. It's not used very much um, nowadays. Most of the time we refer to a bird as being split. So there we have it. That's about all we've got time for in this video. I do hope you enjoy it. In the next video, we're going to start to look at how we can put multiple types of uh, mutated genes together. So, for example, the, um, a, blue, a green split blue with a um, dark factor bird, and how we can then predict the expected outcomes in terms of those genes. It's just a matter of extended Punnett square, but I hope you'll join me uh, when we come on to um, looking at that in the next video. Thank you very much again. Once again, if you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to give us a big thumbs up, a big like. And why not just hit the subscribe button that you'll see down here. Sorry? Here. Thank you.